This conference will now be recorded. Right. Yesterday we began our uh, began with the hands-on activities in our training. We completed Tableau architecture. We looked at how to create text tables and highlight tables. We understood what generated fields mean and how they are significant. We looked at bar graphs and circle views and bubble charts. Right. We also know the difference between discrete and continuous data, how it is represented visually on the graph. So let's continue with our discussion. And I had requested you all to explore labels, labels, the label shelf, and you click on it, the different options that are available and what all things we can do there. So I will just uh, quickly give you a brief overview of labels, mark labels, specifically the labels that are appear on the mark every data point in tableau is called as a mark and we are going to look at the label on the mark i'm going to use orders worksheet itself so so let's say i have created a report let's say i'm going to create a report which is showing us the sales for different subcategories okay and i choose to color it by category each category belongs only to one uh, each subcategory belongs uniquely only to one one category right accessories it belongs to technology it does not belong to furniture it does not belong to anything else only technology so it's unique okay so they have their own color now we want to control the size by using profit that's a lot of information we are conveying on this graph we are telling about what is the sales across different subcategories. We are telling about what is the profit, right? Through through the width of the bar, we are talking about profit. Through the height of the bar, we are talking about sales. Each bar is representing the data for a different subcategory, and they all belong to some category. So that is a lot of information that we are showing on the graph. Now, if you want to label the mark with the value that it represents, you can click on the label shelf and select the checkbox called as show mark labels okay or you can achieve the same by clicking on the text icon present on the toolbar all right now when i do this it is labeling the marks with the sales value when i turn on the mark labels from the marks card you can see it is labeling it with the sales value what if along with sales you want to show profit also okay then what do we do is whatever data is supposed to appear as a label if it is more than one then you have to drag and drop everything on the label shelf so i will drag profit to the label shelf it replaces sales but that's not my idea or intention here i want to show profit as a label at the same time i also want to show sales information as a label so again i will take sales also to the label shelf okay now there are two numbers coming one is uh, profit the other is sales how do i know which one is profit and which one is sales there's not enough clarity until and unless i hover the mouse pointer towards the mark and then the tooltip appears the rectangular box with the information i cannot really uh, be sure that you know i'm looking at profit and sales here so what do we do is we will make it more readable so when you click on the label shelf first thing you see there is label appearance where you can see that we are looking at some of profit and something else this is not editable you if you click here double click here whatever you do here nothing happens if you want to edit this part you have to go to the three dots to the square with the three dots at the end of that text box when you click on that you will get the edit label dialog box where you can put information like i'll write profit and i will clearly write that this pertains to sales okay so like that you can edit the label and the data that is supposed to appear on the label by going to text of course you can change the font color you also have an option called as match mark color whatever is the color of the mark label appears in the same color let's go back to automatic so these things you can check alignment alignment okay 
you can have it right aligned or left middle aligned or left aligned here you will not see any change because it's all on vertical but here vertical alignment you'll see bottom middle top you see bottom middle top okay next thing is the orientation the direction it can be like this it can be like this it can be like this okay so you get to decide what should be the orientation of that label the direction basically so when i use the direction as horizontal you will notice that some of the marks do not have a label on them that is because by default tableau will not allow the labels to overlap other marks okay means if tableau thinks that by providing a label to a mark that label is going to overlap with other mark if i give a label here it might overlap with these two marks it will not allow it to happen by default if you think it's okay i need the labels i really need the labels i don't mind if it is overlapping then you can select this check box allow labels to overlap other marks you see this label how it is overlapping these two marks all right that is one thing then next very important thing here is marks to label exactly which all marks do you want to label what is a mark every data point in tableau is a mark here that data point is represented using a bar so the mark here is a bar okay so all are getting labeled you can say only selected things should get labeled selected means when you click and select when you click on the mark and select it then only the label will appear for that mark rest otherwise it will not appear only upon selection you get the label other option is highlighted so if you are going to highlight the marks like say for example from the color legend so the, this highlighting feature in ta of tableau has been around for a very long time okay you can always highlight the members means what highlight means what only the relevant data is highlighted and rest of the data is dimmed out data that does not pertain to the selection that you made is getting dimmed out okay so that is highlighting feature highlighted marks also have a label now suppose i click on office supplies data corresponding to office supplies gets highlighted and the labels show up suppose i click on technology data corresponding to technology category those marks are highlighted and the labels are showing up okay so this highlighting feature has been around in tableau for a very long time from the color legend from the color legend it has been there always it is active from the color legend so only highlighted we getting labeled or you can say min and max should get labeled min and max based on what now so what do you think i selected the option min and max so tableau is labeling the mark with minimum and maximum what here it is doing automatically based on minimum and maximum profit maximum profit of 55618 coming from copiers and minimum profit of 17725 which is a loss actually negative coming from tables it has labeled min and max max based on the minimum and maximum profit on this graph what if you want it to be by sales you have to change the field i'll change the field to sales now it is going to label the minimum sales which is from fasteners and the maximum sales which is from phones it is labeling those two marks associated with minimum and maximum sales okay so like that you get to decide exactly which all data points you would like to label and which all data points or marks you do not want to label now let us say my requirement is to label min and max so i labeled Uh, it by sales but i also want to give a label for tables i also want to provide a label for tables here because i want to indicate to the client that tables is giving us a very bad loss i want the label for table to show up at all time then you select the mark right click on it and there's an option called as mark label choose always show when you choose always show what happens is whether or not it meets whatever criteria you have defined here the label will always show all right so these were the things that i uh, requested you all to explore and identify at least a few of them you might have connected with i'm sure you might you have explored all these things like 
label appearance, font, alignment, uh, marks to label, all selected, highlighted. At least this much I'm sure you might have explored by yourself. Min and max, you might have probably got a few questions or doubts in your mind when you were exploring and I hope it is clear now. Min and max and its purpose and how do you change the field based on which min and max gets selected. Okay, so that is about mark labels. Every data point is a mark. And we have labeled that mark with the value that it represents. Therefore, mark label. Okay, mark label. Now, with this understanding, I'll give you all a minute to explore the features, min and max, etc. Do it, and then we will proceed to looking at pie charts. In min and ha max, you have scope. Yes, table scoped, pane scoped, cell scoped. Scope is something we will discuss. So this is a table, right? This whole thing, you can think of it as a table. Suppose I nested inside category, okay? So this is a pane. Furniture is a pane. Office supplies is a pane. And technology is a pane. And these are individual cells or columns. Okay, so the whole chart, if all the data on the chart that entire thing you consider as a table if you nest it or if you put it under another parent member if you nest a dimension inside another dimension that will become subsectional right that would become a pain subsection pain and inside that you have cell so here the scope of the label is pain scoped pain scoped so what is happening for a pain scope thing each pain it is giving you the min and max in each and every pain it is giving you the min and max if I change the scope to table, then for the entire table, it will show you the min and max. Cell means when you compare a value against itself, it is only going to be the min and it is only going to be the max, right? So we'll not go for cell level in this case. You can go table or pin. Okay, so let's proceed to pie chart. Before we do pie chart, I will talk about stacked bar. Okay, now stacked bar chart is something that we use for composition analysis. It's like this. So when you have an eye for detail or attention to detail is important, we said we will go for tables. And you can also go for highlight tables, you know. When you have to perform comparative analysis on the data, what did we see under this bar charts are there then circle views are there then bubble charts we have seen these three so far many other charts are there but these three we have seen so far and we know what comparative analysis means then something called as composition analysis or part to whole 
analysis or ratio analysis you can call it anything okay so we'll use the most frequently used words composition or part to whole analysis for which we use stack bar pi and donut charts okay so these three charts come under the category of composition analysis now what is composition analysis it is basically going to tell you what is your data composed of okay let us say there is a bar that is indicating the uh, employee count of an organization employee count let us say i have 100 employees in my organization i have 100 employees and i have represented it in the form of a bar now i have a question to tell what part of the 100 employees how many of them are male and how many of them are female so i'll just divide it okay so many male employees are there so many female employees are there getting it so that is why it is called what part of the total employees are male and what part of the total employees are female that is why it is called as part part to whole part to whole analysis or compo composition what is your data composed of what does it comprise of okay that is a stack bar or similarly a pie chart if you take okay if you take a pie chart what is a pie chart it is basically a circle right that is sliced wedges wedges are created slices are created inside the pie like that so let's say this is the total uh, again employee count and i have 100 employees how many of them are in the age group of let's say 18 to 25 let's say this 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 part of the employees are in the age group of 18 to 25 so for the whole 100 if i take the complete and employees as 100 then this part is talking about the employee count in the range of 18 to 25 part to whole approximately 25 percent of the employees are in that age group we can say let's say this is the part which is telling about the employees in the age group of 26 to 30 then maybe 30 to 50 50 and above okay so what is your data composed of that is what composition analysis or part to whole analysis means okay so with this understanding about it let us create a bar stack bar and then we'll also create a pie chart let's say across different years i am looking at the sales of superstore and we will make it a bar graph to make it a bar graph you change the mark type to bar all of you please create this along with me take order date field to the columns shelf take sales measure to the rows shelf you will see that tableau creates a line chart for you on this line chart you change the mark type to bar when you change the mark type to bar you will get a bar graph like that okay so the total height of the bar is telling you about the total sales the overall sales in that year approximately 500k nearly okay then it went down then it increased and increased further so the overall height of the bar is talking about the overall sales of superstore in that year now i want to look at this sales per category so what will i do i can take category here it's showing me the sales per category or another way of doing it very efficiently is you can take it to the color shelf so when you take it to the color shelf what happens is in each year all the three categories are being sold products related to all the three categories are being sold okay that is why we see everything all the three uh, uh, sub divisions inside that so the total height of the bar is still representing the overall sales in that year but the subdivisions or the partitions or the pieces you can say that have been put together stacked one on top of the other are talking about the sales happening in each category so technology 175k and there starts office supplies and it goes up to above 300k that is because the sales is 151k and it is stacked on top of technology it is stacked on top of technology okay and office furniture is stacked on top of office supplies which is in turn stacked or placed on top of technology so this part is the contribution of furniture towards the whole 
sales which happened in that year clear when to go for a stack bar chart and how to create it is it clear to all of you any questions here So bar graph you have understood, right? Till here you have understood, right, Namita? We are just indicating the overall sales of Superstore. Now we are telling that we want to look at the overall sales of Superstore per category. So if this is the total sales, then what part of that sales is coming from uh, furniture category? What part of that sales is actually contributed by technology? What part of that sales is contributed by office supplies? We want to know that information. Okay. So I have chosen to take category to the color shelf. So this and the complete bar which was talking about the sales in that year is now broken into three parts because we have three members in category and every year all the three category related items are being sold. This part is the contribution of technology towards the overall profit. This part is the contribution of office supplies towards the overall sales. Sorry, sales. This part is the contribution of furniture towards the overall sales. So we are basically stacking the information about three different categories, one on top of the other. All right. Now, now that we know uh, what we are seeing here, it becomes a little, this is also called as, now we are basically stacking a lot of information inside one single bar and we are showing this in very limited space available. So this feature is called as maintaining a good data ink ratio. We are maintaining a good data ink ratio. Now what does data ink ratio mean? When we create charts like this where we are showing a lot of information in very limited space that is called as maintaining a good data ink ratio. Now data ink ratio means this. Uh, one of the uh, integrity rules data visualization rules of integrity by edward tufty says above all show data right above everything else focus on showing your data so you have to show the data above all else show the data okay what does it mean data ink ratio is computed as data ink meaning the ink that is used to represent the actual data that is going to be meaningful to us uh, on the graph versus the total ink that will be used to print the graphic. And the closer this is to one, the better. If it is very close to one, what does it mean? That the data ink and the ink that is being used to print the graphic is one and the same. The total ink required to print the graphic and the data ink on that graphic will be the same means everything is data there there's nothing unnecessary that we have put is what it would mean if it is closer to one it means everything on the graph is valid information nothing we have put unnecessarily over there like if you take this graph the actual data is basically these dark dots that you see data points that you see and the line and the angle and the axis probably the title of the chart Okay, that is the actual data. What do you think is the unnecessary data here? The graph, the graph paper behind the view is absolutely not necessary. But what do you think, how much print uh, ink will be required to take a printout of this? Lot of ink will be required. And how much, what part of that is going to be the actual ink which represents the data, data ink. Data is, ink is going to be very less, just those tiny dots there on the line. That is your data ink. And the total ink used to print the graph is, is going to be huge because of the graph paper. So we are not maintaining a good data ink ratio. 
if we create graphs like this instead if i create a graph like this a chart where the graph paper at the background is gone the actual ink the data ink all this is data only versus the actual ink to print the graphic nearly the nearly one and the same everything is valid data here right so nearly one and the same therefore we are maintaining a very good data ink ratio here close to one we can say right okay so that is called as maintaining a good data ink ratio and above all will all uh, remember to show you the data now this is fine we are putting a lot of information in this tag bar graph everything looks perfectly fine however if i ask you a question in 2014 if you look at 2014 which category do you think is contributing to better sales is it technology or is it office supplies what will be your answer difficult right just to look at it and tell the answer it becomes difficult both of them nearly similar contribution similar size so the ratios are quite similar the ratio is quite similar like one is to one is to one kind of a thing we are getting so we cannot really compare and say which one is doing better than the other okay so in scenarios like this rather than going for a stacked bar graph where it's becoming difficult to also get a relative understanding comparison you can go for a side by side bar graph side by side bar graph you can do that by going to the show me panel and selecting side by side bar okay tableau will decide what should be the structure which you may have to rearrange okay because i want year and then category and i want to color it by category okay so instead of that i can have this now here the data uh, the ink required would be slightly higher but everything is data only as long as that ratio is going to be near to 1 we are good as long as the data ink ratio is near to 1 we are good with it all right so when do we go for a stack bar graph then instead of category let me take ship mode to the color shelf you see this now very clearly i understand most of the transactions are being shipped out using standard class shipment then second class then first class then same day so when the <clears throat> when we are able to easily distinguish compare along with looking at the composition or the part to whole proportions you can use a stack bar graph in scenarios like this go for a stack bar graph wherever you think stack bar graph is not going to help or it's going to confuse a little go with a side by side bar graph but one is used for comparative analysis side by side bar and this is used for composition analysis where where i can also do a comparison where i can also do a comparison between the members okay so side by side bars also we have covered under this category try out stacked bar try out side by side bar and then we will proceed to pie chart try these two things uh yes so here you can also represent it as a proportion of uh, 100% now let us say this is sales right now you can just make it you can apply something called as a quick table calculation and convert it into percent and then there is something called as compute using where you can make it table down so if you consider the sales happening in that year to be a 100% then what percent of the sales is uh, belongs to which ship mode you can see but we will not get into this kind of a discussion yet we need a little more time to come here so today we will leave it here okay
So at any point of time, if you have any questions, any of you, you can ask me there and then. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Okay. So let's proceed to the next chart, which is a pie chart. Pie chart also for composition analysis, which we understood. Let's see our requirement is to look at the. Can we add profit to size in this chart? You can do that. You can take profit to size. So you'll get different sizes depending on the profit. But again, you have to think of sorting the data. Right. If you sort, it will be more meaningful. But sorting is something we'll cover a little later. All right. So now let us discuss about pie charts. How to create a pie chart in Tableau? Now to create a pie chart, you have to take the help from Show Me panel. We cannot directly create a pie chart. We need the help. We need assistance of or help of Show Me panel for that purpose. So let's say my requirement is to look at the profit across different regions, and I decided to create a pie chart for this requirement. Which is going to sh talk about showing the profits across different regions. Okay. Now, what will I do? Is after selecting profit, after selecting region, I just have to go to the Show Me panel and click on the pie chart icon. Simple. Click on the pie chart icon. Tableau will create the pie chart for you. That easy. So you select the measure, select the dimension, go to the Show Me panel, and click on the pie chart icon. Your pie chart is ready. Okay. Now here, we notice that we have a lot of space on the canvas, lot of space on the canvas, and pi is sitting on the top uh, left corner, not utilizing the entire space. What you can do is change the fit of the visualization to something called as entire view. How so? Observe my screen, please. On the toolbar, you have an option called as standard. Standard that is called as the fit of the visualization. When you click on that, you will see different options. Last option being entire view. When you make it entire view, okay. When you make it entire view, pi will center itself. Come and sit in the middle of the screen of the canvas. Okay. Now, what do we do? How how do you think we can enhance? What else would you like to see here? We can label it with the data that it is representing, right? Each slice in the pie, each wedge is representing some information, profit of that region. So let's take region to the label shelf. So we are labeling the wedges based on the region that they are representing. You can also take profit to the label shelf. Show the actual uh, show the actual profit information as well. All right. Now you may think that if we can somehow manage to show the profit as percentage, this is the whole thing. This circle, let us say, is representing 100% profit of the business. Now you want to show the contribution of each region towards the 100%. Okay, then what to do? Then you go to the profit pill with text icon. We want to change the label, right? So you have to go to the label. Text icon. Lab T is the icon that is used for both text as well as for label. T is the icon that is used for text as well as for label. Okay. So here I'm going and I'm going to apply a quick table calculation. Now to compute percentages in Tableau, we don't have to uh, write any formula because there is an inbuilt feature called as quick table calculation in Tableau, which will allow us to uh, perform certain things just by selecting it. Selecting the quick table calculation because Tableau has pre written the formula. It has already written the formula for such requirements like percent of total, etc. So we will get into quick table calculations in detail. However, for now, I'm going to show you percent of total. So you see how profits are getting represented as percentages. Now, let us say you want to show the actual profit also. Percentage is fine. How about showing the actual profit value as well? Again, take profit to the label shelf. So like that, whatever you want to label it with, you can label it. All right. And if you want to move the label inside the pie, you click on the label and then drag and drop it inside the wedge. If at all you want to reposition the uh, pie label, 
uh, you can do that click on it and take it inside the wedge okay click on the label and move it inside the wedge now you might again okay do it till here do it till here Okay, I don't see any questions coming, so I hope you're all able to do it till here. Okay, now let us say we have to represent the data as percentages. However, let us round it off. Instead of showing 16.32, I want to show only 16%. Instead of showing 31.96, I want to round it off to just 32%. So I want to round off the values, not show the decimals. Now, this can be taken care of by using the formatting feature this you can take care of by using formatting how do we do formatting let us see right click anywhere on the graph right click anywhere on the graph you will see an option called as format which will show up okay on the context menu select format when you click and select format the formatting pane will overlay your data pane here it comes on the left side okay instead of data pane it will come and overlay the data pane and you will be seeing the formatting pane here what you do is select the field that you are trying to format i am trying to format the percent of i am trying to format the percent of total profit okay percent of total sum of profit so i have to select that field and numbers the number representation is what i want to format it is actually coming up as percentages. I will reduce the decimal places to zero. And you can see it is getting rounded off without any decimal places. Okay, that is how you get rid of decimals. Try it out. Okay, so this is how you create pie charts and then you enhance them. Now let us look at a scenario where pie chart should not be created. I'm going to look at the profits across different states. Pie charts are advisable if the number of slices in the pie are less, like four or five or at most six slices in the pie, six pie wedges, not more than that. Because when you have too many wedges or slices inside the pie, what happens is it becomes cluttered it becomes very difficult to read it and another point to remember is each slice should be large enough for us to easily distinguish it each slice should be large enough for us to distinguish it okay so now i'm going to create a pie that is going to show me the profits across different states and when i actually create it you will see what it looks like i'm going to use the fit as entire view look at that too many slices really difficult to read this kind of a chart and some slices are so thin we don't even know they exist like if you take indiana and kentucky between these two actually there are two slices there is iowa and there is 
Kansas. Look at this slice for Kansas. So thin, we don't even know it exists, right? So in scenarios like this, don't create a pie chart. Another point to remember while you're doing a pie chart is the angle or the you know space size given to each individual wedge depends on the absolute value of the data. Absolute value means what? Irrespective of the sign. Absolute value of minus 10 is 10. And absolute value of plus 10 is also 10. Absolute value means irrespective of the sign we are dealing with it. So if I look at the wedge corresponding to the state of Georgia, and if I look at the state uh, wedge corresponding to the state of Ohio, both of them look similar. But Georgia is a profit of 16,000. Ohio is a loss of 16,000. How do we understand that this is profit and this is loss? Looking at the pie wedge, impossible, right? So in scenarios like this, don't go for a pie chart where the number of slices are less and each slice again is large enough for us to easily identify it and recognize it. Then you go for that kind of a chart. Now on top of this, yeah, I think that would be about pie charts. So what would be a better alternative to a pie chart when we are saying we are clearly establishing that we should not create pie charts and scenarios like this then what would be an alternative, a better way to represent this data at any given point of time, better alternative to a pie chart is going to be a bar graph. Go with a bar chart, always, okay? So that is about pie charts in Tableau. Uh, I hope it was clear. We know continuous and discrete, right? We spent enough time trying to understand this. Uh, continuous is something that can have a lot of numbers or values in it. It's a range. Continuous fields are colored in green. And whenever you use continuous field, what happens in Tableau? Axis is created with a range of values. Discrete is something with a limited number of values in it, like country, states. Uh, discrete fields are colored blue. And when you have a discrete field on the graph, what happens? Labels will come up on the headers. Okay. Now, we're going to deal with dates now. So we're going to learn how to create a line chart. Very simple. Line charts are used to perform analysis whenever you have time series data. Data collected over a period of time. When will you create a line chart is? Or even area chart. You can say comes here. Line charts and area charts you can create whenever you have time series data, data collected over a period of time. Or basically when you have to do trend analysis. You can call it trend analysis in one, in a simple way you can call it trend analysis. So in Superstore we have data for four years and let's say we want to analyze the data. Okay, from these four years, whatever data is there, we would like to analyze. So how do we do it? I'm going to take the date field to the columns shelf and I want to look at the profit. So I'll take profit to the rows shelf. So that is the profit of, well, let's look at sales. Okay, that is the sales of Superstore. Year over year sales of Superstore. Profit will be smaller numbers. I think we'll do profit. only. Year over year sales, uh, profit of Superstore. Okay. Now Tableau will automatically give you a line chart whenever there is a date field in the input that you have selected to create your graph. If there is a date field, then that Tableau will show you a line chart by default. Okay, there's uh, nothing we can do about it. It always gives a line chart whenever there is a date field. If you want to change it, you can change it to any of the charts that are there on the show me panel, which are active. Let us keep it as a line chart. That's what we are interested in. Now, can you tell me whether this is a discrete line chart or a continuous line chart? How to identify whether this is a discrete line graph or a continuous line graph is by the color of the date pill. Date pill here is blue in color. And we know blue color represents discrete. What will happen when you have a blue pill? You will get labels. So 2011 is a label. 2012 is a label. 2013 is a label. 2014 is a label. All right. That's the profit from each of the years. 
Suppose I want to make this into a continuous line graph. I will have to change the date fill. Okay, you click on the drop down icon of the date fill. On the menu that comes up, you will see certain options year, quarter, month, day, more, which is used to customize the date. Again, there is year, quarter, month, week, number, day, and more. More is used for customizing. So, why two sets here, right? Why year, quarter, month, day, more? Again, year, quarter, month, day, more. That is because the first set of date granularity that you're looking at year quarter month etc will treat your date as a discrete date field discrete date field and the second set will treat your date as a continuous date field what is the difference between the two now we know the first set is corresponding to discrete dates second set is corresponding to the continuous dates what is the difference between the two? Suppose I pick up here from the second set. Suppose I pick up here from the second set. This is how the graph will transform. The values did not change if you notice. The values are the same. It's just that the chart expanded and occupied the whole space. The color of the date pill, however, has changed into green. Green means what will happen? We will get an axis with a range of values on it, which Tableau decides what should be the range of values. All right. Now, there is no difference. Otherwise, there is no much significance. Whatever I was seeing like this, now I have seen it the other way. That's all. But the, to, to basically understand the true strength of a continuous line graph, to understand the, the, the difference between discrete and continuous and how they uh, differ, you will have to go to a slightly lower level of detail. Okay. The last step I did is I changed year to a continuous year instead of a discrete year i have taken year from the second set which will make my year a continuous year field and when that happens the chart becomes continuous line graph with an axis clear is that your question okay now let us go back and make it discrete, but I make it discrete at quarter level now. Discrete at quarter level. So quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four. Profits we are looking at. Which year's quarter one profit do you think we are looking at? Which year's quarter two profit? Which part is not clear? You can unmute and ask me a question. So I have taken quarter from the first set. When I pick up quarter from the first set, this is called as a discrete line graph. Why am I calling it discrete? Because the color of the pill is blue and I have labels. So I know it is a discrete line graph. However, ah, okay, quarter is not clear from which year. Right, right. So this is consolidated. Discrete line graph is a consolidated report. This is the quarter one profits from across all the years. Because what is on the graph? Only quarter. Only quarter is on the graph, which means Tableau is not bothered about which year the data belongs to. As long as it belongs to quarter one, it will take all that data corresponding to quarter one, sum up the profits, and it is so and so. So this is quarter one profit from across all the years. This is quarter two profit from across all the years. Quarter three profit from across all the years. Quarter four profit from across all the years. Okay, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, quarter four from all the years this is. So quarter one to quarter two, there's an increase in the profits to quarter three further increase. Quarter three to quarter four, however, we see a significant increase in the profits. There's a drastic change. Suddenly it shot up. Now, looking at this graph, if I ask you a question, is this the performance of profit across different quarters consistent in each and every year? Will you be able to say with confidence, yes, this is the quarterly profits and this is the shape or this is the pattern maintained across each and every year? 
can we tell that so i hope all of you are able to understand what i'm trying to do here yeah uh, funny to turn on the mark labels you click on the text icon on the toolbar t on the toolbar okay now we cannot tell about yearly profits in each and every year what is the performance of every quarter we cannot comment we are just looking at a consolidated report so discrete line graph is more of a consolidated report if you want a detailed report of the performance of each and every quarter in each and every year each and every quarter in each and every year then you have to pick up quarter from the second set from the second set of year quarter month week day more okay here if i take quarter first thing is the color of the quarter pill is green meaning it is continuous i have an axis with a range of values because of the green pill we get an axis and you see this is quarter 1 of 2011 quarter 2 of 2011 quarter 3 of 2011 quarter 4 of 2011 then quarter 1 2 3 4 of 2012 quarter 1 2 3 4 of 2013 so that overall spike that we saw from q3 to q4 was probably because of this year 2013 q2 to q3 not much difference but q3 to q4 there is a significant increase and here it's a completely different story quarter 1 was fine quarter 2 the profits went down it was actually lesser than quarter 1 then it increased significantly in quarter 3 and kind of not much difference between quarter 3 and quarter 4 here so the latest year 2014 has a completely different story correct okay. so to get a detailed picture about your data go for a continuous line graph to get a consolidated picture or a, or a summary report you can go with a discrete line graph depending on the question that you're trying to answer for your business accordingly you have to choose either a discrete line graph or a continuous line graph now if i pick up month from the first set how many data points will i get how many marks will i get if i pick up month from the first set that you're seeing on my screen it will give me how many marks 12 right because we have 12 months and because this is a discrete line graph one data point per month this is for january overall profit for february overall profit for march from across all the years profit of april across all the years profit of may across all the years okay suppose i make it continuous what will happen i will get 48 data points because in superstore we have data for all the 12 months across all the four years so four multiplied by 12 we'll get 48 data points no no it doesn't matter how many years data you have it just comes up like uh, you can also go at day level right so that is like a lot of data points 1238 marks yeah now this the ganesh i agree with you that we may not be able to draw any meaningful inferences here we may not be able to draw any inferences we may not be able to understand the patterns and all however you can create there's no limitation on number of data points that you show on the graph yes sir yes okay so when to go for a discrete line graph when to go for a continuous line graph i hope it is clear to all of you please uh, create it and then we will proceed about to the next chart which is an area chart area chart also very interesting now this is a line graph okay i'll not put the labels i'll remove suppose i make this an area chart i can do that by changing the mark type to area or by going to the show me panel and choosing area discrete area again discrete and continuous can be chosen even from here the concept is the same what does it look like the space or the area between the line and the axis is filled in with a color that is an area chart where the 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 region or the area between the line and the axis got shaded with a color okay but actually this is not the true strength of an area chart 
area chart's true strength is that you should think of it like it is a combination of stacked bar and line chart stacked bar and line chart okay like for example suppose i want to look at this data for different categories so i have the three lines one line here is where furniture lies very less profits are coming from furniture here is where office supplies is and technology so profits from technology overall very good every point here is with respect to zero on the axis this is around 50000 zero to 50000 this would be around 40000 this would be around th between 30 and 40 somewhere and this is nearly 20 like slightly about 20 this is almost 40 this is with 35 right every point here is with respect to zero on the axis now let's say you don't want it like that you want to retain the overall profit of that year it should be there and the breakup across different quarters you want to see so instead of creating a um, line chart or a uh, a line chart you can create an area chart even before making it an area chart i'll make it a bar okay profit from each year and i will break it at category level okay so this is a stacked bar graph and we know how to read a stacked bar graph suppose i'm going to draw a line connecting all the technology related profits across different years then this is office supplies related profits across different years and then this is furniture profits which is tagged on top of technology which is on top of and on top of office supplies okay so this is the shape of the data now let's make it an area chart that's an area chart area chart is it clear you're retaining the shape of your data through the line but you're stacking the information like in a stack bar so you are basically combining a stack bar with a line chart giving you an area chart so think of it like a combination of a stacked and uh, stack bar and line chart again wherever you use line charts you can go ahead and use area charts there and specifically when you have to use the feature of stacked lines it is more like stacked lines okay now here so some of you are enrolled only for tableau which means i will have you i'll have to take you through these concepts of mean median mode called as measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion which is variance and standard deviation participants from data science background you have already gone through this i'm sure this is what is taught initially right in the training so you will not need it therefore what i will do is i will not take it up now i will take it up at the end of the session okay so those of you who need an explanation on those concepts you can stay back at the end of the session we will discuss rest of you who have already covered it as a part of your data science training if you want you can uh, leave the session at that time all right so for now we'll take a break and proceed to module 4 we have completed module 3 the agenda for module 4 is to look at some concepts like sorting the data in tableau filtering creating a group creating a set and combined set hierarchies tableau folders and highlighting feature highlighter all right so this is the agenda for the next module which we will start after the break okay so take a break here for 10 minutes all of you i will see you after 10 minutes where we will look, discuss these things thank you see you in 10 minutes time
Nari. Hello everyone, hope you're all here. We'll continue with our discussion. So we completed module three, except for uh, measures of central tendency and measures of dispersion, which we need to discuss. That I will do it at the, at the end of the class today. So we will look at certain concepts from module four. We are going to look at how to sort the data and filter the data today. And tomorrow we will continue with these concepts. Sorting, what, what does sorting mean? Sorting simply means to arrange the things in a sequence, right? To arrange things in a sequence, either in ascending order or in descending order, high to low or low to high, increasing or decreasing, right? So how do we do it? We have many ways to sort the data in Tableau, from the axis, from the header, from the toolbar. We can do manual sort by using drag and drop feature. You can also sort by field go to a field and choose to sort there you have different options like choosing data source order or alphabetical order by a field manual sort nested sort how do we do it let us see so let's say i have a graph here which is showing me the sales of superstore across different sub categories sales of superstore across different subcategories is what is here and now i want to arrange these bars by default they are coming up in alphabetical order alphabetical order okay now i want to change this and i want to arrange the members in this subcategory in a sequence depending on their sales value depending on their sales value meaning subcategory with the highest sales i want to see it at the top of this list and subcategory with the least sales i want to see it at the bottom of the list so i want to rearrange the members in the subcategory dimension depending on the sales value how to do that when you hover the mouse pointer towards the axis and on the axis, the, the sales that you see is called as the title of the axis. Next to the title of the axis, sort icon will appear. First click, you will see that the data gets sorted in descending order, high to low. Second click, ascending order. Third click, unsorted view. First click, descending order or decreasing order. Descending, decreasing. Da -da. Right? and ascending increasing so that is how i learned at school ascending and descending used to be a hell of a confusion to me so i said ascending is increasing so i went by the sound phonetics and unsorted view okay another way to quickly sort the data here is you can use the sort icons on the toolbar this is something that will help you sort the data in descending order this is something that will help you to have your data sorted in ascending order now how do you clear the sort there is no third click where i go and clear it what is it that we are arranging in a sequence end of the day the members present in the subcategory dimension are getting arranged in a sequence depending on their sales value right so you will notice that the sort icon icon it appears on the subcategory pill sort icon which appears on the subcategory pill Okay, when you click on the drop-down icon of the subcategory pill, there's an option to clear the sort. 
this is something which will show up only when you have sorted the data okay so when you choose the option to clear the sort whatever sort techniques you had applied to sort your data uh, sort your data everything gone back to the original another way to sort your data is you go to the field and select the option to sort so when you select sort from here the sort window will pop up first thing that we get to choose here is how do you want to sort by i want to sort by and then you can choose field sort by field in ascending or descending order and you can also choose the field using which you would like to sort it need not always be the field used to build the chart you can use any field of your choice let's say by profit so what happens if i say sort by profit in ascending order subcat Uh, sorry so you can see that we have sorted in ascending order by profit sum of profit by sum of profit again there is no okay button here okay sort window also you will not find an okay button you just have to close it so what happened tables with the highest with the least profit is at the top and copies with the highest profit is at the bottom now when you create a chart representing sales and sort it by some other field which is profit usually it will confuse the end user anybody will get confused when they see a different sequence and sort icon and nothing appears to be sorted so don't do such things if you have to do it at least put it somewhere like profit if i take it to the color shelf it will add a little meaning to the chart at least by looking at the color gradient at least by looking at the color gradient now i understand that okay tables is giving me a very bad loss and i also there is a color legend there which is telling me about it and there is copies with very high profits accordingly you see the shades getting it so you can also sort by field if required sort from the axis sort from the toolbar sort by actually choosing the sort option from the field and then choosing how you would like to sort your data now while we are discussing about sort by field let me clear the sort and do one more thing here no no you cannot see the field names from the sort window only it will come it will come rani that is not a restriction of tableau public on tableau public also it will work okay let us just go back to the original and let us simply sort this data in descending order it will come i'll make you the presenter and check okay give me a minute so i have sorted in descending order uh, by uh, using the sort icon on the toolbar i have phones at the top of the list with the highest sales then comes chairs then comes storage in the third place then i have machines in the sixth place so on and so forth okay now i am going to use date field and i am going to put the subcategories inside year i have nested subcategories inside the year dimension so what is happening tableau just remembered the default sequence of phones chairs storage then machines in the sixth position so on and so forth it is retaining the same sequence okay now you may you may get it in a nested sorted way a nested sort may, might have happened on your machine it happens by default here i chose sort by field so it is not doing nested sorting but nested sorting happens by default okay here it is not sorted it has not sorted the dimension members which are nested inside the year nested sorting did not happen it is just sorting by field okay so here you see phones is still at the top of the list when in reality chairs is doing better than phones all right so we can see it is not sorted properly and how do you sort it back properly is what is it that we are trying to sort now members in the subcategory dimension so i'll go there choose sort i want to sort by field uh, i want to do a nested sort okay the moment i say i want to do a nested sort in descending order based on sum of sales now you see what is happening 
phones, chairs, machines came in the third position. And in 2012, chairs and followed by the chairs, we have phones. So within each year, Tableau is looking at the data. It's looking at the sales information in each year and then sorting the members inside that year in a sequence. This is called as nested sorting, which happens by default in Tableau. It happens by default. We don't have to worry. But if it does not happen for some reason, you can go to the field, to the uh, field, choose sort. Okay, then you select sort by as nested and then you select the field using which you would like to sort the data. Okay. So that is sorting from the field. It came now. Okay. Next is now this I will change the chart again. I will just clear the sort. Let me put category here. And also category on color shelf. All right. Now we can also sort from the header from from the header. Furniture is a header furniture office supplies labels. This, this is header. Okay, this is header and with labels in it. On the header, we get labels, right? You can sort by moving things around here. So I'll take storage and place it below appliances. Or I'll take storage, move it above appliances. You see how it is moving? I can do a drag and drop. Drag and drop. Manual sorting it is called as from the labels on the header. Not just the inner dimensions. You can even move around the outer dimension members. Like technology, I'll take it below furniture. Rearranging things you can rearrange the way you like Now when you have nested something inside another dimension and it becomes a pain You cannot move it to another pane altogether copiers I can place it anywhere inside technology here itself I am allowed to rearrange it, but I cannot take it to furniture or office supplies altogether Okay, I think it makes sense also not to do it. So sorting from the headers We can also sort from the color legend Suppose technology is here. If I drag and drop it above furniture on the color legend, even in the graph, it moves up. Suppose I bring office supplies between them, even in the graph, it will come in between them. Getting it? So we can also sort from the color legend. We can sort from the headers. We can do manual sort. We can sort by field. We can sort from axis. We can sort from the toolbars. All these options are there. Try out everything. I'll give you a couple of minutes here and then we will proceed further. If you have any questions, let me know. Yeah, yeah, okay, Brahan, no problem, sure. Okay, I don't see any questions coming. I hope you are all practicing and I am taking it that you may not have any questions. You can practice and get back to me with your questions even uh, later in the week. Okay, or next week, whenever you want to, you can ask me your questions, no problem.
So let's proceed further then. Let us look at the next concept, which is called as filtering the data. Okay, Tableau participants, I think only one, one of you. Kamal, are you okay with the pace? And are you able to follow? Anybody else who's enrolled only for Tableau? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, I could follow actually. Okay. So, at any time, if you're facing any difficulty or you're not able to understand or you think I'm going fast, you prompt me, okay? You tell me and we will check. Uh, sure, ma'am. Def okay. Definitely. I'll, I'll let you know. Thank you. Th thank you. Yeah. And, yeah. Sabahat. So, you're also enrolled only for Tableau, is it? So, uh, how do you find it? Is it okay the pace at which we are going? Are you able to catch everything? Clear for you? Okay. Great. Anytime, if you have any questions again, you can let me know. Even the rest of you also, but I I think having gone through uh, data science training for you, this would be more like uh, very, very simple. Tableau thing would be very simple for those of you who have gone through data science. So I'm not asking you all. But if you have any doubts or questions, you can let me know. Okay, while well, manual sorting, after sorting a category and started sorting another category, already sorted data is moved. See, ultimately, the final thing that you do will remain Himanshu. So maybe I have placed furniture here and arranged it like this. And later when I move office supplies, again, furniture comes down, right? Or when I move furnishings here and then I bring chairs above furnishings later on, let us say. So it, it's, it all depends on the drag and drop that you do in manual sorting. Am I getting your question right, Himanshu? Ultimately, whatever is the last thing that you have done, you may be moving things around a lot with manual sorting, but finally, whatever is your last call, the way you arrange them. Okay. Okay, let's proceed to the next concept, which is how do we filter the data? Now, filters can be applied at different levels. They can be applied at different levels in the sense when we get connected to the data source itself when we get connected to the data source itself we can add filter here that would become a data source filter we can add a filter on any field of our choice and we can fetch only the data that we need let us say you are working for the central region uh, department of superstore and you're interested in creating reports with uh, reports using only central region data then why unnecessarily get connected to the entire data when you need only central region, right? So you can get put a filter at data source level itself. Okay. Second thing is when you create an extract by choosing the extract radio button, by default, the extract will include all the data, but here we can edit the extract and we can add filters again. Okay. We can add a filter by clicking on the add button under the filters section and again, extract only the data necessary. Don't extract the entire data because when we, when it comes to extract with a live connection, there is no limitation. Tableau can handle any amount of data as long as it is a live connection. But when we talk about an extract connection, Tableau faces a limitation of 4 GB. It can extract data as much as 4 GB. However, now again, the extract is written in Tableau's own proprietary language by Tableau's fast data engine. So it compresses the data significantly by almost 10 times its original size. Okay, by 10 times the original size of the data, the data gets compressed in an extract. So significant amount of data can be extracted with a limitation of 4 GB. Okay. So we may have to put, an, uh, put a filter there and extract only what is required. That is another place where you can go ahead and put a filter. Another place where we can put a filter is at worksheet level. Okay, when you you have built your report, let's say I have built my report and now I want to put some filters to limit the amount of data I would like to display on the graph. So that is another place where we can put a filter. So filters can be applied at different levels. You can have filters at data source level when you're establishing connection with the data source itself. You can apply filters when you're extracting the data on Tableau data extracts. You can put filter at worksheet level. Okay, so at different levels, we can apply filters. We understood that. 
what are the fields using which we can filter the data everything all the fields can be used you can use dimensions they are called as dimension filters you can apply filter on measures called as measure filters you can apply filters on date fields so they will be called as date filters so you can apply filters on anything basically so let's see dimension filters when you say you want to fil apply filter on a dimension limit the number of members in the dimension that you want to show on the chart then there are four three actually four options there's a general tab which is basic selection criteria there's a wild card tab where you can give uh, something that matches the string or substring that you define that kind of conditions there's a condition tab and there's a top tab we will see all these now just a moment okay so here is a graph where i am representing the profits from different sub categories the length of the bar is indicating profits these are all profitable and these are giving me negative profits so they are actually giving us a loss okay now with this data i want to apply a filter on the sub category dimension limit the amount of sub categories that i would like to see here based on some conditions which i will define okay how to do that now i'll take sub category to the filters shelf the field using which you would like to filter the data filtering means eliminating what is not required keeping only what we need right process of elimination kind of so here i go i have taken sub category to the filters shelf and the filter window came up and this filter window has four tabs on it there's a general tab there's a wild card tab there's a condition tab and there's a top tab four of them general is simple selection criteria you will select what is required and you will deselect what is not required so let's say i don't need information about accessories or appliances or art on this graph so i have deselected them when i apply this filter you can see the change you can see this getting reflected on the graph when i apply you can see how appliances accessories and art are gone simple selection criteria that's all then comes wild card under wild card we give the match value and we can select only one of the four options given any one of the four options given so i can say i want to look at the sub categories which contain let us say i which contain i in them okay when i apply what happens sub categories which contain i it could be in any place it could be in any place in that word it comes up i want only the sub categories which are going to end with s or es or i don't think we have anything like it. let's say es you see i want only sub categories which end with s now okay so you can use only one it is a radio button only single thing can be selected here and you can give either an alphabet or a substring or the entire string whatever corresponds to the match value that you have given whatever is matching will show up whatever does not match will go away so paper is gone here storage is gone because it does not end with the character s that is the purpose of wild card then we have condition none means you are not defining any condition by formula means you can write a formula by field means by field so let us say here the requirement is that i want to look at the sub categories which are profitable means only those sub categories whose sum of profit is greater than 0 so like that you can set up the condition that is the purpose of condition which it allows you to set up a condition so i want to look at the sub categories whose sum of profit is greater than 0 when i do this what should happen negative all will be gone only positive sub categories giving you profits are getting reflected tables is gone supplies is gone bookcases is gone 
if it is a simple criteria simple criteria single criteria you can go by this what if you have to define multiple conditions or set up multiple criteria then we cannot do it by field because we have only one field that we are allowed to select and only one operator that we are uh, allowed to use so we have to write a formula in that case okay let us say i want to base uh, i want to define a condition based on a range of values like the profit is supposed to be greater than 5000 and less than 40000 okay profit should be greater than 5000 which means i don't want machines and fasteners and it should be greater than 40000 which means or let's say greater than 45000 which means i don't want copiers i want everything in between in between that so i'll set up a condition if the sum of profit is greater than 5000 and the sum of profit is less than 50000 then only show me the data so you can write the whole thing in a single statement also no worries okay so when i do this what will happen you see how copiers is gone from the list and you can see how nothing is below 5k nothing is above even 45k for that matter right now when you're defining a condition based on a range of values let us say you have absolutely no idea about the range that you're dealing with you have to set up some condition but you have no idea about the range that you're actually dealing with means we are looking at profits at subcategory level i don't know what is the minimum profit at subcategory level i don't know what is the maximum profit i have no clue of what is the data i'm dealing with in that case go back to buy field and hit the load button what will this load do is check what is the field on which you're trying to put a filter and how you created your chart everything so we are looking at the profits across different subcategories so at subcategory level it is checking the profits least profit comes from the tables subcategory which is 17725 highest profit is from copiers which is 55618 so now we have an understanding about the data that we are dealing with with this understanding we can go and write our formula okay that is the purpose of range of values and the load button that you see here now i have got everything i'll go to top the last tab is top top is used to set up a limit a limit on the number of data points that you would like to see top is used to set up a limit on the number of data points that you would like to see i want top by field i want top three meeting the criteria i have defined so what are the top three i'll get phones and i'll get binders and chairs if i put this condition other option is we can make it bottom if you don't want top you can also choose bottom i'm saying i want bottom three then when i apply what will happen the other three will come up getting it so what is it that you need to understand from this example is all these conditions get applied on the data together okay this is this and this and this and this when everything is met that that is what you're seeing you're eliminating what is not required and you're keeping what is required at any point of time if you have any confusion or doubt yeah range of values i'll tell you yeah at any point of time if you have any confusion or any doubt or you want to really understand what did i do here what are all the conditions i have set up you can always go back to the general tab on the general tab at the bottom you will see a summary box okay the field is subcategory manually i have selected 14 of the 17 subcategories available so i got rid of three subcategories here then i put a wildcard condition saying i want those subcategories which are going to end with s then i put a condition that i want only those subcategories whose profit is in this range and on top of that i want only bottom three meeting the whole criteria defined getting it so like that they work together and give you the result now what is the purpose of range of values over here let's say i am looking at the data for different regions profits at region level so you will see that the highest profit is west region 108 418 least profit is central region okay 
now i want to put a filter on region so i'll take region to the filter shelf the window will come up i'll go to condition i want to define some condition in order to put a filter but let us say i have no clue about the range of values i'm dealing with here i'll go with by field and click on load when i do that tableau will check your graph how did you build your graph you're showing regional profits so it is telling you that the minimum profit is 39706 and the maximum profit is 108418 now that i know what is minimum profit at region level and maximum profit at region level i can write my formula getting it that that is the only purpose it gives you an understanding about what is the range of values you are dealing with funny is it clear to you now you also okay thank you for the confirmation so that is about dimension filters there are a few examples here you uh, you uh, may try to solve it later okay offline we are discussing the concept and uh, as homework you can try and solve whatever is there in your assignments and okay so let's look at measure filters dimension filters done measure filters means we can also put a filter we can also put a filter on measure we can have multiple filters on the worksheet and all of them will act on the data however just for clarity sake i'm going to keep each concept separate and show you how it works so i'm going to remove the subcategory filter after you have applied a filter how do you remove the filter is you can just drag the fill outside out of the filter shelf or click on the drop down icon of that fill and select clear filter it will be gone remove it or clear it anything is fine same graph same chart i want to look at the profits across different sub categories okay but i want to filter by profit now <clears throat> okay i would like to filter by profit so i'll take profit to the filter shelf whenever you use a measure to filter your data there will be a pop up asking you how do you want to filter on this field profit or whatever is the measure here it is profit and you have to choose i want to filter based on sum of profit i would like to filter based on sum of profit so i'm choosing sum and i'll click next once i do this tableau will look at the data sum of profit for each sub category and it is populating the range here minimum profit is minus 17 725 for tables maximum profit is from copies 55000 something range of values now you can change both of them you can change begin you can change end and only the sub categories whose profit is in that range will appear at least is an option range of values means what both begin and end you can say change uh, and accordingly you get it at least is an option where the minimum value is editable you can give the minimum value maximum is something that gets fetched depending on how you build your chart so this is the maximum profit at sub category level okay so we are not getting anything below 10000 we said from 10000 and above all those sub categories which are giving me a profits of 10000 and above i want to see sub categories giving me a profit of 10000 and above it is inclusive of the number that you give here the filter includes this number that you mentioned so 10000 and above we have these sub categories now let's say i want those sub categories which are below 10000 whose profits are 10000 and below 10000 so i'll use utmost utmost is where the highest value you can mention the least value gets picked up from the chart so what will happen if i apply this below 10000 10000 and below i can see everything okay like that and special special is now here there is no significance of special with superstore we don't have any null data <clears throat> if you want to look at only non null values you can select this if you want to look at only null values you will select this if you want to look at both null as well as non null combined together you will select all values okay 
now i'm going back to range and i will just use the entire range and apply and click on okay i have not done anything i have not applied any filter condition i brought profit to the filter shelf and i just said okay there sum of profit and okay any filter be it dimension filter measure filter or date filter you can show it click on the drop down icon of the pill, pill in the filter shelf and select the option to show the filter when you do this filter will appear on the right side top corner of your screen and it is interactive this is an interactive filter the end user will be able to see the slider they will be able to use the slider to fix the range or if they are not able to fix the range very precisely using the slider they can also click on the box inside the box and it will become editable so 10000 to 30000 so i can also give this it is inclusive of these two numbers <coughs> is it clear measure filters any question here null value i will tell you that i have to tell we have not discussed let me get connected to some data source that i created a very small excel file actually now sometimes every organization let's say they have different departments in it right organizations they have different departments not every department deals with monetary transactions there are certain departments which have nothing to do with monetary transactions they are not dealing with profits and losses like let us say there is one organization with five departments in it a b c d and e where c is a department that does not deal with monetary transactions so there is no money transactions happening no money transactions happening means there is nothing like profit or loss there there's nothing like profit or loss nothing is entered at all okay so it is null null means blank null means nothing blank okay now when i create a report using this data let us say the client wants me to show a report about the profits from each department i created this now they tell me show me only the departments which are dealing with money which are dealing with monetary transactions which have some profit or the other exclude the departments which are not dealing with money now how do i exclude c okay so i'll take department to the uh, fill uh, no no sorry i'll take profit to the filter shelf based on the sum of profit only i want to filter however i want to see only non null values non null which means what c is null so it will go away getting it now let us say the company says all right give me another report with all those departments listed out which don't deal with money then i need only null wherever profit is null i want those departments so i'll say null values means i'll get only those departments with null in the profit column all values means both null and non null will show up okay now it should be clear what is null what is non null and all how you choose uh these options based on the requirement that is about measure filters now you can very quickly exclude something from the graph just by selecting it select it and you can choose exclude this is called as quick filter very quickly you can get rid of it from the graph okay or you can select it and say keep only very quickly you can just keep that value on the graph and everything else is excluded okay no it will not be mentioned as null let me show you the underlying data first let me show you the database or that that excel it will not be written as n u l l null it will be left blank if something is left blank tableau will read it as null n u l l that way okay then we will look at date filters let's say i have a graph like this i want to filter by date how do i filter by date is i will take the date field to the filter shelf 
Now, when you bring a date field to the filter shelf, again, just like when we take a measure to a filter shelf, there's a pop-up asking us, how do you want to filter on this field? Similarly, when you take a date field to the filter shelf, there is a pop-up asking you, how do you want to filter on this date field? I want to filter at year level. So I'll choose year. <clears throat> I'll not do anything. I'll just click on OK. However, I'll make it an interactive filter by showing that filter. Let's show it. So when you show it, the filter gets up. Uh, it appears on the right side and the end user can interact with the graph by deselecting what is not required, selecting what is required. By default, it is a multiple value list. List of members present in that field, list of years present in that field and multiple values can be selected because it's a checkbox. Let's say I'll go down to quarter level. Again, take date to the filter shell. This time I want to filter at quarter level. So quarters, I'm not doing anything. I will simply show the filter. Quarter level. Okay. Let me bring it below this. Now, depending on what I select and deselect, accordingly, the chart will get updated. Very simple. Just like your dimension filters. Right, more like your dimension filters. You will select the year that you need. You will deselect the year that you do not need. You will select the quarter that you need. You will deselect the quarter that you do not need. Very simple. We can also filter it based on range of dates. So when I take a date field to the filter shelf, I can also choose to filter based on range of dates, <clears throat> like range of values for a measure. We can use range of dates for date filter. Range of dates, I'll say next. So the begin date is 4th January 2011. End date is 31st December 2014. Begin date is the first day when a transaction happened in Superstore in this database. End date is when was the last transaction recorded. The complete range has come. Now, let us say some person took over as the CEO of this company on so and so day. If you're not able to very precisely select the date, you can click on the date box. The calendar picker will come up and you can pick up from the calendar. Let's say some person, Mr. X, took over as the CEO of the organization of first, on 1st first June 2012. And this person stepped down. Let's say on 31st December 2013. Okay, now we want to see what were the profits of Superstore like during this person's tenure as the CEO. Okay, so let us see. Once I apply this or once I click on OK, you can see the data only for that duration, that time period when the person was the CEO. So you can see we, uh, by the time he uh, kind of stepped down, he contributed to very significant profits. He took the business towards very high profits. A hypothetical situation, but I hope you're getting it. So like that, you can give a range of dates. Let me edit that. Next option we have is starting date. It's like your at least option, uh, at most option, where the end date comes from the data connection. Okay, and the begin date is what you get to choose is what you get to fix. So depending on the range of dates that you have specified, whatever is the begin date and the end date, it will come. So I'm taking starting date, which is editable, which I will give. Ending date should come from the data. Why so? How will it help? Sometimes you see end date. The start date to define fixed start date that you want to filter on. And end date is fetched from the data source. If you're not able to, if it's an ongoing business, right? If it's an ongoing business, we cannot really fix the end date. Every day new transactions happen. Every day the date keeps changing, the end date. So in such scenarios, the starting date option is very helpful. End date keeps getting updated from the database. Begin date is something that you get to choose. Okay. Then ending date is the opposite of it. The first day when the transaction happened for the business is fetched from the database. The end date is what you can choose. The other way around. So range of dates where you can edit both the uh, range of dates where you can edit both begin and end. Starting date where you get to edit the starting date. 
ending date where you get to edit the ending date special is again null non null all if you have your database with some null dates and you want to see those years which are null then you can do that same logic okay now here we have one new thing called as relative dates okay there is one new concept called as relative dates relative to by default it is relative to today means your system date tableau will fetch your system date relative to today okay relative to today whatever information you want you can get related to today i want the data for this year this year is 2020 which begins on 1st jan 2020 ends on 31st december 2020 so it will fetch me the data for 2020 whatever data is available if the data is available here we don't have no we don't have data for 2020 nothing will come up on the graph so relative to today get me the data for previous year or previous quarter previous month week day at whatever level you can go relative to today let us say let us fetch the data for the last six years for last eight years so you see the dates that it is going to consider from 1st jan 2013 up to 31st december 2020 it is going to get you the data for eight years 2013 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 eight years that is how it goes you can check this date value here to understand what data will be fetched so if i apply how much will i get i'll get 2013 and 14 the two years for which i have information here okay now when you're dealing with historical data some data that is collected in the past like superstore where we have data only up to 2014 it does not make sense to analyze relative to today correct it's not making sense analyzing the data relative to today because it is something that we collected in 2014 up to 2014 so in such scenarios where you might want to change the relative date you want to compare it with respect to some other date apart from the default which is today you can simply click on this checkbox anchor relative to okay anchor relative to and here you can mention any date of your choice so i'll say relative to 2013 same day but in 2013 so i want everything to happen relative to the anchor date this is called as the anchor date if i say fetch me the data for the anchor year what is the year here 2013 so it's going to fetch me the data for anchor year 2013 if i say fetch me the data for next year from the anchor date next year is 2014 so it will fetch us the data for 2014 from the anchor date get me data for the previous year it will give us data for 2012 getting it so you can also change the anchor date to whatever date of your choice and perform your analysis relative to that anchor date that is the purpose of relative dates okay just a few more points i have to discuss on filters actually no no it's a range of dates that you're dealing with so you cannot exclude something in in between if you have to do such things then you have to go with a discrete um, date filter. Okay, Ibrahim, you go with a discrete date filter that will allow you to remove something from the middle. But when you're going with a continuous date filter, you can edit begin and end, but you cannot edit something in between. Here you can do though. So I want to show only 2011 and 14, then I'll have to check this. we've gone well past uh, we've gone a little past the timeline given to us i will stop here we will continue we'll do a recap on filters tomorrow and continue with the same topic all right so that's it from my side for today mean median mode and the other things like standard deviation and variance whenever we have time uh, whenever i find time at the end of the session i will take it up because we are not going to be doing any charts yet that comes somewhere in module 9 by then i will cover it okay
attendance for uh, yesterday was not marked anyway manish had taken down your no names uh, so he will mark it no, no problem he will mark it and for today what i will do is he is not there so i will just take a screenshot of all of your names and uh, pass it on okay so just give me a moment don't leave yet let me take a screenshot Now, if this go to meeting tool will come in the screenshot or not, I can so I can do caution. After caution, it is group up. Up to Pragati. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Thank you all. I have taken your uh, screenshot of the go to meeting tool. Okay. So I will pass this on to 360 DG, the team, and they will uh, mark the attendance from the back end. Okay. All right. Thank you all so much. Can Tableau handle any exceptional request on filtering on some, suppose, client bones one particular dimension at the top of the chart? Request on the any order. Yeah, then you go for manual sort. If something should be at the top of the chart, rest of them is okay. Then you go with manual sort. Okay, Manually, you place that thing on the top. 